methane. Yes. Yes. Ethane. Note the ability to be able to spin these around. So this is C6H14. We'll take a hydrogen off each end. And then what we can do is we can join them together. You'll notice that the structure we get in the end won't be flat, but we can bond these ends together with a bond here. And that will produce C6H12, which is cyclohexane. And again, notice how it isn't flat, but it is joined all together. As a line structure, it's just going to look like a hexagon. Now we're going to make two two dimethyl butane. So what we'll do is we'll take this apart and we'll put the hydrogens back on the way they were before. So we'll be back to hexane again. Now what it asks us to do is to take off the methyl groups from each end. That's, uh, that's these guys right here. So I'm going to take both of those off. There we go. That's kind of a butane structure there, but it's missing two hydrogens on it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take these hydrogens off the second carbon here, because that's what we're asked to do. And this is where the methyl groups go. So the methyl groups go here and here. And you can see them there on the four carbon chain where I'm pointing. And then you've got the two methyl groups here. And then what we'll do is we'll put the hydrogens on the, the slots that were left open when I took the methyl groups off. And you can see that we still have C6H14. So that's still an isomer of hexane. Same molecular formula, different structure now though. This one is ethylene or ethene, and you can see the double bond here between these two carbons represented by the springs. Notice the lack of the ability to being able to rotate these. So that's, uh, that'll, be, <laughs> that'll be ethylene or ethene. Now off the ethylene, I'm going to remove one of these hydrogen atoms, and I'll replace it with a methyl group. And what we have now, is propane. Now next I'm going to take another hydrogen off but I'm going to be careful about which hydrogen I remove before I put the methyl group on. So the hydrogen I'm going to take off will be this one that's next to the other methyl group specifically. So I'm going to do that. And I'm going to put the methyl group on here where the hydrogen was. And there we have it. Now you'll notice that again there's no rotation about this double bond. So this is a structure that's going to stay the way it is. But look at the positioning of the methyl groups. This is called cis because they're next to each other. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch these and I'll put the methyl group down here and the hydrogen I'll put up here and this one is called trans and again note that I can't flip this to make it cis because there's no rotation about this double bond these two springs here don't allow it so this one's called trans so this is ethylene again. If I take a hydrogen off, 
And I'll replace it with just a regular bond here. And that's what we've got now. Then it asks us to put two more carbons on with a double bond here and then to put the hydrogens on here so that we have enough hydrogens for the other spaces. That leaves us one space up there and then two hydrogens down here. And that would be one three butadiene. So that diene is the two double bonds there. Now what you'll notice is that we can flip this around and we can have that. But that's really the same as this because they, we can get this by just by rotating it. So this structure here is benzene and what you'll see is that it's three carbon double bonds joined with single bonds. So you see the single bonds here, double bonds they're all here. You'll notice it's a flat compound which is important for its stability. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace one of these hydrogens with a methyl group which will give us the compound toluene. So you can see that's toluene here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace the second, the fourth and the sixth hydrogens with nitro groups. Take off these hydrogens. And I'll take one at a time and I'll put these on. So we'll have a nitro group here. Now the nitro group is NO2. But I'm using black atoms here only because the nitrogen is actually bonded four times. So it's actually acting more like a, a carbon is. And the reason for that is because the nitrogen is actually positively charged. So you can see the two nitro groups here and here. And the one goes on the bottom here. And here is our TNT tri nitro tri nitro toluene right here. Nitro group, nitro group, and the nitro group. Here's the methyl group here. Tri nitro toluene. It's still flat. So here is our benzene molecule here. We're being asked to make benzoic acid. The way we'll do that is we'll take off one of these hydrogens here and I'm going to put on a carboxyl group which consists of a C double bond O like this. I'm going to connect that to the ring. And then I'm going to put on an O with a hydrogen on it. That's there. So that's going to go on here. So this will be this will be benzoic acid. So this is our benzoic acid molecule and next we're being asked to make phenol. One way we can do that is we can take the carboxyl group off which is the C double bond O with the OH. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take off the OH of this carboxyl group and stick it on here where the C double bond O was connected. And this here is going to be phenol. Now we're going to prepare methanol and for that we take methane which is CH4, we'll take off a hydrogen, we'll replace that hydrogen with a DOH and that will produce 
Yes. 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 Next we're going to make ethanol. So we've got ethane here, which is C2H6. I'm taking off one hydrogen here and I'm replacing it with an OH. And that will give us ethanol. Next, we're going to make one propanol, and what we're asked to do here is make propane, which is this C3H8 molecule we've got here. I'll take off one hydrogen off the end here, and I will replace it with an OH. And that would be one propanol, one because it's on the end here. Next, we're asked to make two propanol, and what we'll do for this one is we make propane, and we'll take one of the middle ones off here, and we'll put an OH group on there. And that is going to be two propanol. You'll notice it's two propanol because the OH is on the second carbon. This one's for methyl ethyl ether. We're asked to start with a molecule of ethanol which looks like this. And there's your OH there. So we're asked to take the hydrogen off here. And replace it with a methyl group and that's what I've done here. So the hydrogen that was on here has been removed and I've replaced it with a methyl group which is a CH3. So CH3O, CH2, CH3. That's called methyl, ethyl, ether. Now the way this is named, the ether part is actually the oxygen. There's your methyl and there's your ethyl here. That's the two carbon group. Remember it was made from ethanol, which is two carbons. Ethyl, methyl, and there's your oxygen, methyl, ethyl, ether. So this is for diethyl ether, and what you're asked to do is start with an ethanol molecule like this. So you've got the two carbons here in the OH group. We take off the hydrogen, from the O, and then we add an ethyl group. And this would be diethyl ether. Now remember the naming of the ethers, the O part is the ether part. Ethyl, ethyl, diethyl ether. Right, next we're going to make a formaldehyde molecule. So this is methane, and what you're being asked to do is take two hydrogens off the central C there, like that, and then you're being asked to double bond an oxygen where the hydrogens were located, so that there is formaldehyde. <coughs> Next we're going to make propanol and what we'll do here is we'll take off these two hydrogens here from propane. Now that's the three carbon structure here. And then what we'll do, so I'm going to cheat a little bit here and I'm just going to replace that with the, replace the two hydrogens here with the double bond of oxygen. So that there is propanol. Now what makes this an aldehyde is the fact that it's got a C double bond O and a hydrogen here specifically. If this was a methyl group, we'd call this a ketone, or it's, if even it was a C or anything else, it would be called a ketone. Next, we're going to prepare uh, two propanone or acetone, and what we're going to do here is we'll take these two hydrogens off the middle of the propane molecule, and then we will replace that with a double bonded oxygen. So what makes this a ketone is the fact it's got C connected to a C double bond O connected to another C. If this was a hydrogen, it would have been an aldehyde. We're doing two butanone here. This is butane, which is C4H10. One C here, one C here, one C here, four Cs. 
we're asked to take the hydrogens off the second carbon here, that's what I'm going to do, and replace them with a double bonded oxygen. So this here is 2-butanone, which is a ketone, and what makes it a ketone is the fact that we've got a C double bond O connected to two Cs. Now we're going to make ethanoic acid. This is ethanol, so we've got the two Cs and the OH. And what it's asking to do is to take these two hydrogens off here and replace them with a C double bonded to an oxygen. There we go. So there's the C double bonded to be O, there's your OH. This makes up what we call the carboxyl group. Carbonyl, hydroxyl, carboxyl. So this is going to determine what a carboxylic acid looks like or a carboxyl group. We're now going to make propanoic acid. This is ethanoic acid that we have here. So we've got the methyl group connected to a carboxyl group. And what we're being asked to do is remove a hydrogen from the carbon next to the carboxyl group and replace it with a methyl group. This gives us propanoic acid. It's got three carbons in it, one, two, three, and it's got the carboxyl group on the end. Next, we're going to prepare methyl ethanoate. To do this, we need two models here. We need the ethanoic acid, which I've got over here. And then we've got the methanol, which I've got over here as well. So you can see the ethanoic acid has the two carbons in the carboxyl group, and the methanol has the CH3 with the OH on it. Now what we're being asked to do here is remove the OH from the ethanoic acid. We're going to remove the hydrogen here from the methanol, and then we're going to plonk these together. This produces what's called an ester. Now an ester is defined as being a C double bond O connected to an O, but instead of this O being connected to a hydrogen, it's connected to a carbon. This makes it an ester as opposed to being a carboxylic acid. But this is the structure of methyl ethanoate. Next we're going to make ethyl amine. So what we've done here is we've got ethane, just a two carbon structure with the six hydrogens on it. I'm going to take away a hydrogen here and I'm going to replace it with an amine group. Now an amine group is a nitrogen with two hydrogens on it and nitrogen needs three bonds. So I'm going to plonk that on here and that would be ethyl amine. The amine functional group is this part here, the NH2 part. Next we're going to make ethanamide and what we're going to do is we have the ethanoic acid molecule here which has the methyl group and the carboxyl group on it. We also have ammonia and ammonia is a nitrogen with three hydrogens connected to it. So I'm going to take a hydrogen off the ammonia, like this, and then I'm going to take the OH off the ethanoic acid, like this, and then I'm going to put the NH2 onto where the C double bond O is. This is a thanamide. What makes this an amide is the NH2 connected to the C double bond O. So this part here, is called the amide functional group. Next we're going to make glycine. So here I've got my ethanoic acid and what I'm being asked to do here is take a hydrogen of one of the carbons now. I'll do that and I'll replace that hydrogen with an amine group like this. 
So this here is glycine. So it's got an NH2 group down here and the carboxyl group over here. It's called an amino acid because it's got a carboxyl group here and an amine group here. In this next one, you're asked to do a reaction to form methyl ethanoate. Now, if we go back to part five, where we did the formation of esters, what we did was we had the ethanoic acid like this. And what we were directed to do was we were directed to take the OH off the carboxylic acid and then the H off the methanol and then put them together. So that's what I'm going to do here. So the OH comes off the ethanoic acid and then the H comes off the methanol and then the two remaining portions get put together like this. So this is our structure here, we get the methyl ethanoate. But left over, what we have is the OH here and the H. So I had the H taken off the methanol, the OH was taken off the carboxylic acid, and then when we put them together, of course, what do we get? We get H2O. So that would form the basis of the chemical reaction we'd need to put on that page. If I take you back to the way we were naming ethers, an ether is defined by being the oxygen in the middle. And this one, where we're looking for dimethyl ether or methyl, or methyl ether as it's sometimes called as well, which is going to consist of two methyl groups connected to the oxygen. So methyl, methyl ether, or dimethyl ether. Now you're also being challenged here to create an isomer of this. Now an isomer is going to be the same compound, or the same molecular formula I should say, and then those atoms are rearranged into a completely different compound. So presently, this is the dimethyl ether molecule. My challenge would be to pull this apart and form something completely different. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually pull off the carbon from the oxygen, and then I'm going to put the two carbons together. Now this creates a different structure than what we had earlier. And then what I can do is put the remaining hydrogen here onto that oxygen and there we go, we have an isomer. So that's what an isomer is, it's something that has exactly the same molecular formula but a different structure. And this here is ethanol which we've made before as well.